started Goop in 2008, I was like, my calling is something else besides, you know, making out with Matt Damon on screen or whatever. That's the Goop Lab. We are in a science lab here. And what we have are lots of, as you can see, shiny stainless steel stuff. And in here we measure force fields, and in here we me measure energy fields. Between individual atoms and between atoms and molecules, we move atoms and molecules around. We've done loads of 60 symbols videos on moving atoms and molecules around. This lab has goes by the incredibly sophisticated title of A103. Nothing more to read into it. There's no numerology there. It was on my radar. It's not something I would generally sit down and watch. But given that this one is all about energy and energy fields, and the double slit experiment is mentioned. And a number of years back, we did something, as you'll remember, Brady, on quantum woo. I really wanted to take a look. And um, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to sit down and, I'm, well, perhaps stand up and just watch it. Oh, just wow. another day at the office. The opportunity that we have with the Goop Lab. Looks like a lot of fun. Very attractive people doing very attractive things. <laughs> OK, let's just pause that for a second. Okay, the following series is designed to entertain and inform, not provide medical advice. Okay, well, that's a good disclaimer to have up front. You should always consult your doctor when it comes to your personal health or before you start any treatment. As both of us know, Brady, however, if you put stuff in the video information on a video, often, the vast majority of times, it's ignored. The entire universe is made of energy. Only 4.6% of the universe is considered physical matter. Okay, so that's actually okay in terms of the 4.6% of matter. In fact, physicists have got a really embarrassing problem in that they don't know what the vast majority of the universe is made up of. In terms of where we are, in terms of what we're doing, in terms of what they're doing, that 4.6% is pretty much everything. So let's... The human body has an energy field. <sighs> okay, what type of energy? Are we talking kinetic energy, electromagnetic energy, acoustic energy? Um, potential energy, what type of energy. This is, this is already beginning to wind me up. The more connected you are energetically, the healthier you will feel. <sighs> so it's the same old tropes and the same old memes. So that idea of everything being one integrated whole and how we're all connected energetically, etc., etc. I believe the 21st century is the age of energy. Okay, every century is basically the age of energy. Energy drives pr pretty much everything. What I don't want to do for a change is come across as absolutely and utterly, well, this is just nonsense and the, the, the informed scientists ridiculing everything. If there's a placebo element of this, if there's a therapeutic element of this, perhaps you could argue from that perspective that some of this might have some value, but let's, let's see where it goes. There you are there. The first time... The okay, this is bonkers. Okay, we can't let that one go. I had an exorcism. If we're talking about exorcisms, this perhaps might not be the most educational, but let's go. I've only got to the titles and I'm already pissed off. I work with energy as a body worker and a chiropractor. You have energy that's bound up in the muscles and ligaments and spine and fascia and organs when you're under stress. So I show up and actually influence how energy's moving. Okay, so energy is a really important concept in physics and energy very broadly speaking, is the ability to do work. But it comes in so many different forms. And to a certain extent, what he's saying, the first part of that is right, in terms of biochemical energy in, in your body, in terms of your muscles, there's mechanical energy and biomechanical energy there. But how is he influencing that energy? That's, that's the question. Is it possible that some of the problem, though, is just, like, misappropriation of the word? Like, if they're, if they're talking about something different, but they're calling it energy and you're getting all wound up, like... Is that, is that, does, is all the problem possibly tracked back to that? I don't think all the problem tracks back to that. Certainly what I've read online about this, that's the, all of the problem is not tracked back. That's a really, really good point. Uh, Brady, let me um, just pick something up. Can I put this down? Is that okay for a second? Okay. No work has been done on this particular body. I've lifted it up against gravity. I've returned it to, to, to the same position. So no net work has been done on this particular body. Of course, I've, you know, my muscles have had to do various things and there's been energy expended there. But in, we have to be really, really careful how we define different terms. For a physicist, in a professional context, work 
is the uh, dot product of the force and displacement vectors or the integral of the dot product of the force and displacement vectors. That's obviously not what it's, you know, if I say you've been working nine to five, Brady, that's obviously not what brings to mind. So, yes, we have to be careful with language, but the problem is we physicists have to take some of the blame because we import everyday language. It's not just the people out there who aren't physicists misinterpreting this. I would say we are very guilty in propagating quite a lot of quantum woo. And let's see where this goes. So I show up and actually influence how energy is moving so that your body can heal faster and your physical being, your emotional being, your mind, your soul. I've just got to, I've, I have to stop at that point. Because this is meant to be what I dislike is the goop lab. So there's a scientific sheen, forgetting about that disclaimer at the start. And I don't think, you know, that disclaimer is really going to impact too heavily on people. And now we're talking about the soul within a scientific context. Okay. Well, I'm not treating a particular condition when I'm working with people, but I have a hypothesis. If you just change the frequency of vibration of the body itself, it changes the way the cells... I, do, I have to stop it there. What, what the hell do we mean by frequency of vibration? What, so if I, I sort of push myself or I push Brady, you know, does he... What, 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 are we to, what frequency of vibration? You've healed me, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what, what is this? And, again, this is um, importing, just as you said, Brady, this is importing particular language of physics and misinterpreting that in an everyday context. Of course we talk about frequency in, uh, in physics so much, Quantum physics, right at the heart of quantum physics, we've got a very simple equation, which is E is equal to H nu, or HF. There's a direct relationship between energy and frequency, but the problem is that's then couched in terms of, well, you're on the same frequency as me. And, you know, very, very everyday, almost mundane language. And when we start to mix these terms, that's when it gets dangerous. Just before he started talking about the soul, my, my concern is that when he's, he seems to be couching this as a valid um, medical um, process. But you said yourself, you know, you can come to work and have a talk about frequency. Mm -hmm. And then you can go home and talk to your loved ones and use frequency in a different context. And that's not a problem. So why are you calling him on it? Like because he's catching this in a scientific context. Whether he's doing that deliberately and whether Paltrow was doing it deliberately, I don't know. The stuff that, Pal that the, you know, that's out there in Paltrow, I think she believes this stuff. That guy, in terms of what he's doing, does he really believe he's affecting people? Maybe he does. Is he doing this deliberately? Is he using that language deliberately um, to put that scientific sheen on? Or does he just genuinely believe that? I don't know. Things like magnet therapy laser therapy, light therapy, vibrational therapy, and how they're manipulating the energetic field of a person to heal or break up tissue, etc. I just, the energetic field, they've never defined it. I've been hesitant to show it just because it, it can look strange. Yeah. But I think it's time for the world to yeah, see. Yeah, what a great platform. <laughs> you can measure the energy field of the body like somewhere between four and six feet off the body. No, no, you cannot. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. But that surely, is just like, nonsense. Surely you're giving off warmth, you know. You're giving I'll... off infrared radiation, but in terms of influencing that, to that extent where the body's doing this, that's an energy field he claims to be influencing th so that he can control emotional responses to that extent via infrared. But he, he, if he'd mentioned infrared at some point, that might have been useful, but what is that energy field? Is it possible you just don't know and he's... Ta he has found something and is able to manipulate something okay. that you just don't understand. Okay, so let's say, um, okay, that's his theory. I've got my theory. Let's say all human emotions are couched in terms of um, completely undetectable nanoscopic rings of energy. Midichlorians. Midichlorians, something like midichlorians, but they exist out there. And let's say that love, let's wind in some good physics terminology. Love is due to the constructive interference of those rings and hate is due to the destructive influence, interference of those things. They've not been detected yet, and actually their energy scale is such that we, we, we just could never detect them. Prove me wrong. Definitively prove me wrong. But he's got people, he has got people wobbling around, he's got people saying, right. I feel better. And... So we need empirical evidence because the placebo effect is exceptionally strong. We do trials of drugs where we build in the placebo effect. This is a combination of placebo effect, cult of personality. He's a fairly attractive and charismatic guy, I would say. Um, and he's clearly um, very eloquent, and he's clearly um, got people hanging off his every word. 
there's a huge number of confounding variables here. The body doesn't end right here at the skin. The body is multidimensional. There are layers to it. <laughs> multidimensional in what sense? Honestly, that's a word that's loaded. And I'm interacting with those layers. So when I'm moving my hands in the air and I'm snapping my fingers and I'm making sounds with my hands, I'm putting energy into the field around somebody's body and I'm changing their energy system just by the way I interact with it. The way we interact with someone without even touching them at the subatomic level changes them in some way. Right, no, I've got to stop. I can't, now he, I can't, now, now uh, he is definitely getting into physics. Right, so sub, he's saying he's influencing the person at the subatomic level by clicking his fingers. If we could influence matter at the subatomic level by clicking our fingers, we wouldn't have to spend billions on CERN. You we wouldn't, wouldn't have to. Need that. And we wouldn't need this bloody thing. Uh, th th no, this is just nonsense. This really is just nonsense. And, you know, the argument will be made well, science doesn't know everything. So, you know, how do you know? Sure, science doesn't know everything. If science knew everything, I'd be out of a job. Brady would be out of a job because everything would be out there. But science knows some things. And the way that science works is that we have to have empirical measurements and we have to have evidence. If we don't have evidence, and you know, physicists are pretty bad. I am no fan of the multiverse because what, ex what empirical evidence have we got for the multiverse hypothesis? Zilch. Is what this guy is doing, you know, aligned with that to a certain extent in that he's proposing something with no empirical evidence? It is. So I will stress that we are really don't want to come across as a physicist on his high horse, you know, spouts off about new age woo stuff, the way I'm doing that. But we physicists do have to take some of the blame. But Phil, science works by collecting evidence and having a hypothesis and working through these different procedures. But that, that's not how nature works. So, for example, I don't know how my car works, but I know when I press the accelerator, it drives. Is it possible that you don't know, and even he doesn't know, how the human body energy field works, but he's just stumbled across the fact that when he clicks his fingers at a certain location, it cures people, just like I know when I press the accelerator, the car works. I don't know why, but I know it does. Okay, is this repeatable? If we do this under um, controlled... Uh, experimental conditions, can he do this? So for one thing, I would love to see, he's talking his way through. You can, he, the, the hands are clicking around. What if we were to put a blindfold on people and what if we put a headphones on and do it in an entirely darkened room? He says it works up to six, six feet away, I think somewhere between three and six feet away. Completely isolate the person. Don't give them any hints as to where his hands are or what he's doing, and let's then see what the motions are. But maybe it works because it's him. Maybe, maybe his quantum energy field chakra is what makes it work, and therefore it's not repeatable by you because you haven't, but, you're but, not him. So I'm saying use him. The question is, let's cut out external stimuli and see if this still works. Let's see if they're doing all this motion or if that is solely due to suggestion and the placebo effect. And we know how strong the placebo effect is. There's been some amazing research done in the realm of quantum physics to support this. One foundational study is called the double slit experiment. Proved empirically without a shadow of a doubt that our consciousness actually shifts or alters in some way, shape or form physical reality. Right, that was bollocks. Sorry, but that is bollocks. The idea that um, you might have to bleep a lot, but really, truly, utterly, complete bollocks. The man is talking out of his nether regions. That has not been empirically proved beyond a shadow of a doubt. So irritatingly and frustratingly, some scientists have actually have claimed this. Some very important physicists, including Heisenberg himself. But we don't have that evidence. We do not. That evidence is not there. There are probably, at last count, something like 25 different theories of quantum mechanics and there's no, or interpretations of quantum mechanics, and there's no empirical evidence that definitively says this one is important over this one. Is information important? Yes, it seems to be. Is knowing the trajectories of particles um, and how that plays into, and knowing the history of particles and indeed even future particles, does all of that play into quantum mechanics? Yes. Do we understand the maths? Yes. Can we do incredibly sophisticated calculations and predict what happens in the real world? Yes. Do we understand it? No. And physicists, re what really winds me up is when physicists present something as sort of a fait accompli. 
and this happens all the time, particularly, you know, things like many worlds, that's one interpretation of quantum mechanics. Multiverse, that's one interpretation of physics. In terms of empirical evidence for either, none. Doesn't mean we can't talk about them. Doesn't, absolutely doesn't mean we can't talk about it. And the thing is, I'm going to cut this guy some slack here for a change. Because when you have physicists of the caliber of Heisenberg, indeed Martin Rees, Merman, those type of people, basically saying without any real qualification, yes, consciousness is so important for quantum mechanics, can you blame this guy? Or can you blame people like Deepak Chopra and the, and the like for, for taking this on board? And, you know, as I say, we physicists really are sort of propagating our own little quanta of woo. Every time we get up and we don't make it really, really clear, actually, we don't fully understand this. To generate the wave moving through the spine to try to manipulate the flow of information between the brain, nervous system and muscles. This... I know I'm interrupting a lot, but this is, this is really the crux of this. How is he doing that? Really, how is he doing that? And, you know, if we were to... Um, but, do... Phil, I walk in here and I don't know how you're doing stuff, but I believe you're doing it. You tell me, you tell me that in that machine you've manipulated atoms and you've moved them and you show me a picture on a screen, but I don't know you did it. But you could sit here and you could watch every single step of that process. In fact, you could but watch... But he's doing that. He's letting us watch his process. No, he's not. So yeah. what, what's... The, no, but I can show you exactly from the point of here's how we measure the current. This is the instrument we use to measure the current. He's doing this it. He says the way I do it is I move my hand here and I feel but, an energy here and I, I can, and I click my fingers. Yeah, but what type of energy? And how is he influencing it? But you know, you do know because I've bored you senseless. But I don't it's know that current. it's happening. But I don't know that it's happening. But I can show you that current. I can show you that measurement. We can, we can get a meter and we can see that current. Okay. You're not convinced. But, but, but I'm watching him move his hand and then yeah. I'm seeing the people on the bed go and move around and have their little okay. uh, exorcism. And like, and, and there are multiple explanations for it, but you can't say that he hasn't shown us. If I go, I'm influencing my quantum fields, Brady. Do you believe me? No, I, I personally don't. So what's the difference between me and him, apart from he's much more attractive, has much more hair? I think everybody at Goop knows me to be a bit of a skeptic. Yay, a skeptic! A lot of people's emotional energy gets bound up the tip of the tail. Okay, that's a really great example. No, that, that's a really what we were talking about earlier, Brady, in terms of energy being used in this sense of positive and negative emotional energy as compared to physical energy. That, that, that's a real issue here in terms of confusing those two contexts, very different contexts in terms that's of... That's semantics. Ability. It's not. It's not in this context where he's, he's arguing that he's going to make people feel better by changing their energy fields. So there's a question of the physical energy field being confused for the emotional energy. But Phil, if you, if you said, oh, we've just got a new member in our research group, and like she's giving off really good energy, I think she's going to be really good. I wouldn't sit there and go, "Oh, do you mean kinetic energy or electromagnetic?" No, or... and I no, neither would we. All stereotypes about physicists to one side, but we wouldn't be claiming to be able to stand beside or three feet away and influence our energy and so change our state of mind, which is what he's claiming. This is where a control study, whereby she's got some headphones on and she's listening to some, some nice relaxing music, and it's blindfolded and it's completely in the dark. I would like to see if the reactions would be the but, same. But Phil, maybe that external stimuli, the handsome man with the nice mm -hmm. hair and the nice voice, maybe that is contributing to this cocktail of physical things oh. that are happening that make it work. Or maybe it's the only thing. And how would we do that? How would we isolate one effect from the other? We'd do a control study where you try to control the variables in the environment. I don't trust anyone that wears all black outfit like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him that. I will give him that. The man has got a, a, a key sense of style and sartorial elegance. It's got to be said. Look at that. <laughs> How do you feel about this being made and put out there? That's a really good question. Really good question. Um, am I worried about it? I am worried about it in terms of disseminating that type of... It's nonsense, you know, it really is no scientific basis. They've got the disclaimer up front, front for all of 10 seconds. You know, you've got that simple writing on a black background or whatever against incredibly attractive people, you know, being, you know, saying my life has been radically changed. You know, one is going to outweigh the other. 
if it's a therapy, if, if that's all it is, is a therapy and it's a placebo and people are coming out of those sessions and they feel, I feel so much better now. I'm not gonna argue with that. You know, religion plays that role in many people's lives as well. My key concern is, particularly when this is pushed as a medical procedure, when it will treat cancer or it will treat other forms of disease, that's when I get really, really scared and actually we need to regulate this down. Should this be on Netflix? This should, it comes back to the question of balance. I would say um, they can present the aspects of this, but there really should be a counterbalance in this. They pretty, got, pretty much got free reign in terms of what they present. There should be physicists, there should be doctors, there should be chemists, there should be whatever, right across the board, saying, no, this is wrong, this doesn't work, explain this, explain this, just as we're doing now. We shouldn't have to rely on 60 symbols to, to, to you know, take this to pieces. That should happen in, in the process itself. But of course, you know, is that going to, is a fully balanced documentary like that going to attract any, like, anything like the attention this has attracted? No, of course not. Where is the evidence that what he's doing works? There's no evidence at all. We've seen some people moving around. The very first step in that is a controlled experiment where you cut out his visual and his audible cues and do a perfectly controlled experiment and then see how those people behave. And if, honestly, if they do that experiment, and where people have headphones on and blindfolds on in a darkened room and they move and they have no cue at all as to where his hands are and he's influenced. I would be over the moon. Oh my, that would like revolution. That, that guy will get a Nobel Prize. Let's put it this way. I'm not going to bet the bloody house on it that that's going to happen. Maybe in the 60s. And what it does is it connects new age ideas, sort of Eastern mysticism with quantum mechanics and quantum physics. The idea that, you know, quantum physics means that there's an interconnectedness to all things and with there's a universal spirit, etc. All these type of things.